Hey, good morning. Good morning. Day two in uh, calculating dosimetry. If you would, go back to the sheet I posted yesterday. And I hope you can see that. Even if you don't mess with it, if you just look at that front page and do a bit of math thinking, right? Look how I noted that energy response of the detector. The detector I, we're working with here for this Geiger-Muller tube is a 500 volt LNT 7317 or whatever's on that sheet. So it has exact specific properties that have been for that tube, I want to say they that tube type was characterized about 50 years ago. All right. It was about well, probably before that even. It was probably around the 1940s that those tubes began to even early. I'd have to go back and check my tube history. I'm slipping here. So bottom line is we know more about that tube than a lot of other things in the world. And its response to types of energies. Alpha, beta, and gamma particles can be, can have the same, uh, it's complicated. So these particles have different masses, I'll use that. But it also has to do with uh, a lot more, so we'll keep it simple. They have different masses. And those masses have the ability to move, because of their size, have the ability to move through things like gammas. Let's, for conversation, it's a very tiny particle and just zips between things, doesn't run into them. A beta particle is a very large, heavy particle. It tends to slam into things and just stop. So beta doesn't travel very far. Alpha is a very light particle with... a uh, lot of energy you get into to having zero as a denominator in some of the conversations so it gets very uh, subatomic so we know how the detector responds to alpha beta and gamma why does that matter to dosimetry I have to go back in to figure out dosimetry and use all of that information tied into one formula. I have to know that if my counter counts 70 gamma hits at an energy level at a harm, a harm rating of 1, So every 70 gamma counts that I see, I have to know these are gamma energies, right? Every 70 gamma energies I see is actually 100. I can safely make that statement because of the characteristics of the tube and how we can use it. Now, I've got large error margins around this. I'll grant you that. But basically, I can say with confidence, if I know it is pure gamma, that 70 counts on the meter is roughly 100 disintegrations for the area of the detector tube. It's a measurement. And I'm adding in little complications in here that are taken into account by serious folks. So anyway... If you look at the next energy, the beta was below that. Beta particles are large, heavy, lumbering things, very easy to stop. Alpha are light things, very easy to stop. So if I turn my Geiger counter on, and I have the detector shielded very well, more than just in the case or whatever. I've wrapped it up and uh, I put it in 
the steel tank and I look at the counts. The counts I get from inside this protected space is we'll go with our 100 counts per minute of gamma. All right, but it was only 70 counts per minute. Am I confusing folks yet? So I got 70 counts per minute from my detector. I have made a statement that the detector is seeing 100 counts per minute because I can do that. I've explained why. I can take you through the logic behind that. I didn't discuss error bands. We can get to that. It's driven out of the data. So now, because I isolated that, and I know very little attenuation happens with gamma, and I'm seeing 70 counts inside the tank. I've extrapolated that to 100. When I pull it out of the tank, my Geiger counter goes up to, let's say, 100 in raw counts. And I'm making some reasonably educated assumptions that I'm pretty good with my filtering. So I had 70 counts inside the tank. Now I have 100 counts outside the tank. Those 100 counts, again, my tank was only attenuating alpha and beta particles. So now I've got 30 extra counts out in the atmosphere that I didn't have inside that tank. Those 30 counts are alpha or beta particles. Because that's the way the detector works. It's seeing whatever energies it can. You filtered out all the alphas and betas, and now you're not. So those 30 extra counts are alphas or betas. For conversation's sake, I'm using a beta energy source. So it's going to throw off gamma and beta, and there's gamma background always, right? We know this. So I've got 30 extra counts from my detector of beta. I already said the 70 counts I was seeing is 100 actual counts of gamma. But now I'm seeing 30 counts of beta radiation. Well, those 30 counts are now, I can correct because I know the physics of the tube. Those 30 counts are actually closer to a hundred counts of beta radiation because my meter only sees 30 percent of the beta particles that go by. So the beta particle, we've got 30 betas out there now, or the meter has counted 30, but there's actually near to a hundred beta particles because the meter cannot see them all. I know that. So my initial dosimetry using just gamma counts is gotten confusing, right? You've got to be able to separate in the math, in your mind, the corrections you've got to put on to the data in order to get a dose equivalence. So these beta particles, again, I actually have as many beta particles in the air as gamma particles. But the meter didn't tell us that. We had to know how to make the meter readings match reality, I guess. So those hundred beta particles we've got. Now we've got a hundred gammas and a hundred betas. The gammas have a harm of one, right? That's in the chart below. So that harm of one for a gamma, that means the gamma is only a harm of 100. But the beta harm 
What's the beta harm? I said I've got 100 betas, right? I only counted 30. I know the meter misses 70%. It's I'm just rounding. This is rounding, right? I'm saying I've got 100 betas. For a gamma dose, I've only got a dose of 100. For a beta dose, I've got a dose of 3,000. My dosimetry just went from 100 to 3,100. So this is a point I've been trying to make for quite some time. This is the second page of the math in that spreadsheet that can show you that. I could go further with that spreadsheet and do with my little test setup and do detector physics and see if I turn the detector 50 degrees or 90 degrees or 100 to 80 degrees, whatever, does, are the counts still the same? I can do some of these same derivative tests with these numbers from that. But the biggest thing is the simple shielding process. The shielding will give you an idea of the ratios of alphas and betas, or actually it can give you a good idea of the gamma to alpha and beta, but it won't give you good alpha and beta discrimination unless you're very, unless you're reasonably well skilled and it's playing with filters. Remember the alpha filter is, what's an alpha filter? Alpha filter is just a very thin, the thinnest piece of plastic film you can find. Maybe a few different thicknesses, and you can actually do some physics with that stuff, and more calculations, get closer to the source isotope things, using the ratios of alpha to beta to gamma, and some reasonable extrapolations. So there we go. I just went from a dose of 100 to 3,000 using a very, you know, loose walkthrough of the math. So the next thing is to build the, some formulas that will put those numbers in front of you on that second sheet or on the first sheet. And we could do some playing with the ratios and build charts and graphs. Or you could go back through... Uh, material older than you to learn about these that's a different course that one's somewhere else so here's 13 minutes on uh, dosimetry stuff hope it makes sense